Hello guys, today I'm launching something big on this channel and on Laravel Daily Com simultaneously, the program which I called Laravel Daily Mentorship. Haven't been so excited in a while when launching something, so to me personally, this is pretty huge. Kind of my vision of dev education, how I envision it after teaching for more than 10 years already, I came up with this, I call it program. So the word ship in that Laravel Daily Mentorship has three meanings. The first meaning, I invite you all, premium members and free members and YouTube subscribers to a ship with me and we will sail for upcoming months towards unknown oceans and islands for you to build your portfolio to have better jobs and opportunities. I will help you with that. So the first meaning is actual ship. Imaginary ship, of course, but the message is that we're in this together. The second meaning is the goal that you need to actually ship something. As I mentioned in multiple videos on this channel previously, if you want to find better jobs, new opportunities, new partnerships, you need to show your work on GitHub, visually, as a package, as an API, whatever. But the more you ship things, the better are your chances to find new opportunities. So this is the second meaning. And the third meaning is the actual word mentorship. It's kind of just a funny wording joke. I will provide my mentorship and the mentorship of my team along the way. And there are two goals in this program. The first goal is to build a habit for you to ship something ideally daily. That's where the name of Laravel Daily kind of pays a big role, but at least every few days ship something. And then the second goal is for you to build a portfolio of work, which you would show to potential employer or whoever is interested in working with you. The first experiment course in that Laravel Daily Mentorship will be a real job interview task taken from a real job interview to build Laravel API. In this video, I will explain how the whole mentorship and course will work. And at the end of this video, you will see the first lesson, which will not be actually coding, but it will be transforming the initial job description, job specification from client into our plan of action, which we will implement for upcoming few weeks on this channel and on Laravel Daily Com simultaneously. So this is, you can see on the screen, the actual task, the job description from the client, and this will be the course for upcoming few weeks. This is a hiring test, as you can see, to build a simple API for travel agency. And how we will go through this course. Every day, I will publish one new lesson, both on LaravelDaily.com as a course and on this YouTube channel. On LaravelDaily.com, premium members already can see that course and first two lessons published, and lessons will be in both video format and text format below. And on YouTube, I will publish every day kind of short version, short summary of each lesson. And differently from my other courses in the past, I actually have dates when the lessons will be published for Laravel Daily.com members as well. It won't be all in one published immediately. And actually, I haven't even built those lessons deliberately. This time, I want to go with you together on this ship, as I told you, and build the course along the way with your feedback, with your questions, with the code that I will see from you while reviewing your code if needed. And that's the whole point. It's a living mechanism. That's what I meant by education model, because lecturers and teachers, I think, should adapt to real scenario, to the real group of people going through the course with their ideas, their feedback, and the problems they encounter. So at the time of shooting this video, I have two lessons fully ready, and all the others I have rough plans, but I will build them along the way with you together. And what I want to advise you or maybe ask you is that you would build the feature before I publish the video or before I publish the next lesson. So for example, the first task of the API would be to build the database models and migrations. Please try to do that before I publish this lesson about database schema. Then of course you can watch that and read the lesson and compare your solution to mine. But that would be the most value that you can get not by watching the course, but actually trying to build it yourself and then kind of looking at the answer. It's not even the right answer, it's my version of the answer. And then we can discuss in the comments, on Discord and on YouTube. 
Speaking of Discord and discussions, as I said on YouTube here, I will publish short summaries, which will still be the full code, but for premium members of Laravel Daily Com, I can offer much more things. First, the lessons will be both in video, in longer video format with more content, also text format lesson will be available, also Discord channel to discuss things, also access to GitHub repository, and finally, for those of you who want, I will personally review your code along the way. So on that Discord, which I've prepared the channel already, and I will invite premium members there today at any time, you can ask me to review your code, invite me to the repository, or it may be a public repository, and I will try to monitor Discord and tell my opinion as much time as I have. So this is kind of the benefits that premium members will get from this course. But as I said on YouTube along the way, I will also publish lesson by lesson, except for Saturdays, which are sacred for videos from my car. Except for that, there will be one lesson each day and I will improve future videos based on the comments on YouTube here. So be active as well. Another thing that I've implemented in this course is to add a lot of links to related content. That's why the lessons for this course will be a bit longer than usual. So the first lesson, the video part on Laravel Daily Com is 21 minutes, which is unusual for me because I keep shooting like five minute videos, but this time I want to go deeper. So if I'm talking about accessors and mutators, I will, by the way, or along the way, will mention two kinds of syntaxes for accessors and mutators. If I talk about UUIDs, I try to, for example, create stuff without UUIDs first and then transform into primary key UUIDs and stuff like that. So with those examples, at the end of each lesson, there will be pretty big list of links to read more about specific topics if you're interested in them. And in the lessons themselves, there will be a lot of kind of notices, by the ways, and additional explanations for things, not just coding like a bulldozer line by line. So that will be also available in the text versions for premium members of Laravel Daily Com. And in general, my vision for this mentorship, and that's why I started a new section on Laravel Daily Com, this is free and public, in resources, project ideas, you may find a list of ideas to build from real projects from Upwork, and I will fill in this list as soon as I see new projects. The vision is to build project by project with people who are interested in that specific topic or in that specific challenge. It's kind of like cohort-based learning, kind of like virtual academy, project by project. The first experiment I'm leading myself the next experiments, the next projects will involve my team more. We'll see how it goes. But the vision is for you to ship many things. I may provide some badges or some virtual certificates along the way. I don't really believe in those because you're doing it for yourself, not for me or for some public achievements, but it may be a cool perk for some of you. So this is the vision and the first experiment is the API building project. So now you will see the first kind of lesson zero, which is not exactly a coding lesson, but more like planning lesson, but it's a hugely important thing. That's why I started from that, not from coding. And what you can do already after watching this lesson is start building the project before the next lesson tomorrow is published. With the database schema, you can try to at least play around with it. The specification of the project, the job description is in the first lesson on Laravel Daily Com. I will link that in the description below. So this is Laravel hiring test. You can read it all. You can take notes and start building tomorrow on YouTube and on Laravel Daily Com. There will be a video about creating the database, models and migrations, and then lesson by lesson, we will build the API in roughly a few weeks. Any feedback is welcome, both about the program and the course and everything in between. As I said, to me personally, it's quite an important experiment involving you guys as much as possible and hoping that many of you will actually join me in shipping the code and let's see how it goes. Now, lesson zero, transforming this description into plan of actions. Let's go. Hello guys, welcome to this course about creating a small API with Laravel for travel agency, which is actually a job description in a real job interview for Laravel position I received via email. 
So we start this course not with coding, but with actually analyzing the job description. And in here, I want to kind of teach you how to think, how to transform this from client, any specification, any job description, any notes into actionable list, into plan of action. So first, I advise you to read the job description three times. Why three? With different goals. The first goal is to read it through just as an overview. So what the project is about. So in your head, you'd have some kind of vision that it is about travels and tours. You kind of skim like a long form tutorial. So travels and tours, then you have admin and editor. So you notice some keywords, some repeating parts, endpoint, which means it's an API then public and private, which means roles and relationships between admins and editors. And oh, you see that the client is technical enough to provide the tables and columns, which will be a massive help for us. And then there are notes which you just skim, but don't fully read too much. You just need to have a brief overview in your head. Then the next reading is about structure of the database. So I like to start every project from database schema. So it would be visually and in the next lesson, we will do exactly that. But even from reading, you need to list the entities, list the objects, what you will work with. So users, obviously, roles, obviously, and then the client says travels and tours. So those will be probably database models and database tables. In this case, client is technical enough to provide that for us. But if in the future you have some kind of job description without this list, you need to build it yourself with roughly the fields that you need. You don't have to provide all the fields. What is important is relationships and general database models. From that, one of the goals is to provide the list of questions to the client. So how would that work? Would that relationship be one to many or many to many? Of course, the client is not technical and wouldn't know that, but you can always ask. So will that project have one client or many clients, for example? So your database schema is kind of your next goal from the second reading. And then the third reading and all the upcoming readings is to build your plan of action. My personal approach is to think what feature may depend on other features or for example, database table depending on other tables. In other words, what features you cannot create before other features are already built. So you cannot create rows and permissions without assigning that to users. And with that in mind, I will show you one of my tweets that got really popular. Most of the projects that I see follow pretty much same process of building them. Database structure, then CRUDs for that database, then rows and permissions, and then visual stuff. In our case, we have API, so we don't need four and five. We actually have three steps, globally speaking. And then each of those three may be divided further, which is exactly what we will do. So this is the plan of action I came up with. And here I'm reading the text form of this same lesson that you can see below. And one of the goal here is to reorder what client said, how they listed into how we would approach things. So for example, the client listed endpoints in a way that first we need endpoints to create new users. But actually, in my opinion, it's better to work with travels and tours first to list them. So public endpoints without any users, and we can fake some data to show travels and tours, then we can filter and order. And only then we can introduce rows and permissions with users, and then implement endpoints by admins and editors to create new travels and new tours and manage them. And then as kind of final sweep of clean up the project, Laravel Pint, Laristan, and then docs for what is already created. So in our case, this is kind of the visual representation of our API project. Of course, that plan is only initial and it may change. In every project, you find out new things, clients change their mind. You also bump into some roadblocks along the way where you can see that you, for example, didn't create the right relationship in the database or some package doesn't work as you expected. So it may all change. But if you don't have even initial plan of action, then you're kind of in the dark. So the first thing before starting the code, I do advise you to build something like this. 
And then another rereading of that initial job description would be to find out small details or something between the lines that client may not even mention probably. From that you would estimate additional work, additional questions to the client. So for example, one of the things they mention is list of tours by travel slug. What would be the logic for that slug? They don't specify that it should be automatically generated, but it probably should and that it probably should be unique because if we identify the travel record by slug, it probably will be a part of our route model binding. So you need to notice those small details. And here's when you read in full notes, for example, UUIDs, you need to think what to use for UUIDs, then tours prices, so price logic with multiplication and dividing by 100. Then you can think what you would use for creating the docs for API, how to write feature tests and stuff like that. Speaking of feature tests, final thing in this lesson, what I will notice is when to write feature tests. So the clients didn't specify whether to use TDD or write tests afterwards. My personal approach, if it's not specified by client or by team, is to write tests after every feature. So kind of separate opposite polar opposite approach is TDD. So write tests before the code. And then the opposite would be write tests after all the project is done. And both are inconvenient to me personally. Again, it's a personal preference, like everything in coding. But to me, in my practice, TDD didn't work because usually we don't know the full specification and full 100% clear behavior of every feature up front. So if they change the specification, we need to change both test and code, which is double work. And then the other way around, if we try to write tests only after the full project is finished, we may forget how some features work. It takes additional mental space and time and brain power to remember how the first feature was implemented or the second feature, which may be weeks ago. So to me, it makes the most sense. Finish the feature, for example, user roles, then write the test for user roles. Finish the endpoint, write the test for that endpoint immediately within the same lesson, which is exactly what I will do throughout this course. So now as we have this initial plan, time to implement that and the first task for you kind of, if you want to get through this course without my help yet, the first task is to build the database with all those nodes by the client, including UUIDs and price. So good luck if you're building that yourself. And my version of that is in the next lesson.